All right, today we're going to install the uh, Dakota Digital digital gauges on the bike. And I got this off of eBay. Um, it's got a list price of $10.95, and I got it for $8.97.63. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. So let's open it up and see what we got in here. All right. So we got the instructions, which I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to have to read these. Can't throw the instructions away because uh, <laughs> I don't want to screw anything up. And this looks like the oil sensor, uh, which is going to go on the bike, and it'll actually um, give us an oil temperature. Uh, and then I guess the next thing we got are three gauges. So I'm sure one of these is a left, one's a right, and uh, I'll have to figure out which one is which one is which. I don't see a well. I see a one and a two. So obviously, when I read the instructions, it's going to tell me which side each one goes on. So those are the two side gauges right there, and then the last one, of course, is the <coughs> the main center gauge. And that's what that looks right there. And it looks like it's giving me some kind of an indicator on my um, on the gauge that the, the mileage odometer on this instrument can be used or programmed. So I'm not sure if it's going to pull it off the ECM or if it's going to pull it off of this, but uh, I guess this is all we need. So let's go get the fairing off and start working on it. Now before we play with anything electrical, we always pull the fuse and that's located on the driver's side. And behind this cover here, it's this big red fuse, so we'll pull that out of there. And now we've disconnected the power to the bike. Alright, before I start removing the screws, I am going to put a towel over my fender uh, because we are going to be taking the fairing off. So I would just want to be careful so that it, when we lift it forward here, there is a connector that we have to take off for the light bulb. And when we lift that forward, we don't want to make sure that we're not going to crash on the uh, fender. Taking the fairing cover off is really easy. All we have to do is remove these three screws, this one, this one, and that one. And that will help us get the windshield and the mirrors off. And what we'll first do is remove the mirrors and get the windshield out of the way. After that, we've got two torque screws, one right here and one right here, and they are different lengths. This is a shorter one, this is a longer one, so we just have to remove those. So let's start removing the screws. Alright, first thing we'll do is remove the screws and the windshield here. Alright, with that removed, then we can pull the windshield out. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the long screw back in so it'll just hold the fairing so the fairing won't tip out. And now we'll get the torque screws out on the sides. All right, we'll take the torque screws out now. All right, that's one side. We'll go do the other side. All right, we're now ready to take the fairing off. So all I'm going to do is remove this screw. Tip it forward, and then we're going to get that connector that's on the uh, headlight off. All right, with that done, we just lift the fairing cover off, and there we go. All right, now that we got the fairing off, we got to take the vent off so we can install the new gauges. So there's just two screws that remove here. All right, and the that just slides right off. Now we've got our gauges exposed. Alright, now we're ready to take the gauges out and there's three screws on these two sides and then there's one in the middle here that'll pull that center one out. But the first thing we got to do is we've got to disconnect the wires. And there is some wire ties that are holding these wires in. Let's 
So let's get those snipped. Obviously being careful not to cut the wires. All right, once those are loose, then you should be able to just lift this out of here. It's got a little plastic clip right here. Pull up, pull it out. Perfect, this one's got ones on the side. Now, well, let's get this guy off. All right, that pulls the wires out of there. So now we'll start taking the uh, screws out. And it calls for a T25. So we'll get the easy ones first. All right, those three are out of there. I should be able to take instrument cluster out of here, I'm hoping. And I'm not sure if that's going to be the case. So, we're going to stop the video here and try and figure out what's going on. It's not coming out as easy as the instructions make it look. There's a metal pan right here, and it looks like that's going to have to come off to get these gauges off. So we're going to start snipping some wire ties here, and I'll have to redress the wires once I get everything set back up. But we've got the two screws over here that go over to the speaker pods. There's this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw right here, I'm sorry. And then this one right here, and then the other two that go on the speaker pods. And then there's this one down here, right here, uh, that you have to take off. And as you can see, I've, kind of, I've got the plate slid back now, and part of the gauges are out. But there's three screws here, this one, this one, and this one. This one, this is the one you got to take the plate out for. And actually, the center gauges would not come out either, so... Uh, I'm working on getting this one out here. Uh, that one's got the little tight screw right underneath there. Okay, so I told you in the, in the uh, beginning there that I've got a gauge one and a gauge two. And actually the instructions show you this. Um, gauge two is over here and gauge one is over here. And it's saying view from the front of the motorcycle. So uh, that's where we need to put our gauges. So now let's get those installed. All right, next thing we got to do to install the gauges uh, for gauge number one and gauge number two is we need to take this enclosure off here. All right, so what we need to do is we need to get this piece off, and it's only held on by three little small clips here. So I'm just going to push on those down. And then the, uh, the, the gauge should come out. Or, well, it looks like I'm going to get a trim ring off of it here. So... That's out, and I'm not sure if there's a, yeah, I guess gauge one and gauge two has definitely got uh, a way of doing it. So it looks like the white one goes on gauge two, which is this one right here. So that fits right in the hole right there, and then I'll put this little trim ring back on it, and we'll be good to go. And then gauge one is the black one. So this is my gauge one. So we'll do the same thing with this one. Just pop this little ring off. All right, that's that. Pull that gauge out, and that's going to go with gauge, the black one's going to go with gauge one, so there's gauge one. So, And it, and it looks like uh, there's really, you know, 
I mean, you got to put that connector at the bottom, so they look pretty idiot proof from the standpoint that an idiot like me is able to do that. And then we'll just clip on the new, get the trim ring clipped back on. And do that to this one. Didn't quite have it seated right. All right, and that's it. So we're we're all set and ready to go there, and we'll start installing the gauges. All right, I got the two side uh, pieces on, and now we're going to put the center gauges in. And this one, we're only going to put the center screw in because the bottom two holes. Um, they actually, the screw goes through the plate, so... And I'm not going to tighten that down until I get the plate situated and then that way those screws when I put the screws in here and over here it'll be alright so I'm gonna go move that plate forward and uh, get the screws back in that um, I did use some blue Loctite on all of the screws so uh, it looked like when I took them out that it had some on it so that's what we did so I'm gonna put the plate back on and, uh, and we'll be ready to I guess connect everything up the next step is to install the oil temperature sensor. All right, first thing we're going to do is kind of clean this area up here. Because we're going to be removing that plug there. So that looks nice and clean. All right, so what we're going to try and do is remove the plug next to the drain plug. And... Try and slip the new one in as quick as possible. All right, I can kind of feel the screw starting to come out. Let's see if I can tighten it, uh, loosen it with my hand. Yeah, I can. So, we're going to have the new plug ready to go. Hopefully we don't lose a bunch of oil, but I don't know what else to do so I can get my finger on it. All right. It does not want to screw in. <laughs> uh, this is a dilemma. There we go. I got it now. All right. So I put that blue tape over so that I wouldn't get a lot of oil in the connector. So now I guess it's a matter of we just got to tighten this thing down. Now you had to install this thing properly. There's a rubber washer on there and a tapered piece. And the tapered piece is kind of what I'm threading into the pan now. So I'm figuring once that tapered piece is threaded and in that hole I would be able to back the sensor out of there Thing is, I'm not too positive how much I should tighten it, but we're gonna tighten it pretty good here because we don't want to. Since it's tapered, I should probably feel at some point that it's starting to get nice and tight, like it is right now. So, you know, it's a mechanics feel, I guess, that you that you have, and I think that's about it. So a little bit of oil came out of it. 
I would doubt that much. I will definitely be checking my uh, oil level. And we'll get this guy cleaned up here. And get this tape removed. It's probably just all eaten up by the oil now. <laughs> Hard to feel it with gloves on. There we go. All right, got all the blue tape off. A little bit of oil on the hands. Clean that connector off a little bit there. Bench. Should be nice and tight now for... Yeah, I like that. Okay, so next step then is to run the wire. Connect the wire to it, and then we're going to run it up. I think they said the right side of the bike, so we'll probably come over here and then run it up the uh, tube. So let's get doing that. All right, we got this thing all buttoned up now. All the wires are all tied down and ready to put the fairing on, but... I think now it's time to put the fuse back in and see what these gauges start doing. So for that, I guess I'm going to have to read the instruction manuals a little bit. I don't want to screw something up, so I'll be back in a minute. All right, now that we've got everything installed, they say the next step is to turn it on and make sure we got digital gauges and everything. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we get. And yes, we do have gauges. And I can already see a problem that I'm going to have. Um, these, these inserts here that uh, are an add-on, uh, it's not allowing me to fully see. This is my um, gas gauge, and I can't see that. And I'm going to guess over here, this one here, which is the clutch, I'm sorry, which is the RPMs, uh, I'm not going to be able to see that. So, I may have to remove those things. Oh, that's better. And now I can at least see, you know, that my gas gauge is a little less than half. So, I might have to put those, take those out. And I don't know if there was a ring around that before, but... Um, that is one thing that I see. So anyway, uh, now we're going to get into programming it and setting up everything that I need to get set up. So let's turn it off and we'll start programming it. Just wanted to give an update on those trim rings. You know, these things that went in here. I actually found the product on eBay and there was this metal piece that went over the gauges, which I took off, uh, and then the trim ring, you know, then fit fit on the metal plate. Well, in doing so, it obstructed the view, so I just took it off. Um, Harley actually has something that you can buy for $60 that kind of dresses this area up really nice, so I may be looking into that, but uh, taking that metal plate off really helped, uh, and I get a much better view of all my gauges now. Okay, the last step on the digital uh, gauges is to actually turn it on, see if you do have the gauges, uh, you know, if they do light up and show you, and we've done that. So now we're going to go ahead and put the fairing cover back on. All right, we got everything all buttoned up up here. This is the oil sensor wire right here, two gauge wires. Everything else is all buttoned down. All we got to do now is put the fairing cover back on. Uh, and then uh, start getting these gauges, see what they're doing. All right, so the last thing we got to do before we put the fairing cover back on is to put our uh, vent back in. So that just kind of slides back into place here. All right, and tighten down, and that's it. So now let's go get the fairing and put that on. In order to get our fairing on here, we Again, got to plug our headlight back in, so here's the connector for the headlight. So we're going to drop this thing in over the lights. Get our connector ready to go here. Make sure we got this guy going down. Right. Pull it 
Call it up. Put our headlight in. And then just guide it into place. And I'm going to again put the top screw in up here. And that will hold it for me while I put the side pieces, put the screws in the side pieces over here. Two here, two here. Remember, top one is a long one. Just back at this done. Again, a long screw on the top, short screw on the bottom. Okay, now we can uh, remove the windshield screw here. Alright, we'll slip the windshield in. And the next part is putting on the mirrors. Alright, that's it. So now let's get these uh, Dakota Digital gauges dialed in. Alright, so I'm going to do my best that I can to uh, set this thing up. And I'm going to pair it with my phone because I downloaded the app. So I'm going to try that. Um, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to see everything, so we'll turn everything on. I'm holding the uh, button that we use to um, reset our, our trip odometers, and that that's the button that seems to go through everything. So uh, Bluetooth is there, and again, you hold that uh, function switch, they call it, down, and you'll see that it'll start saying hold to set. Then you release it and we are good. So we, we went into Bluetooth and it's showing our status. Uh, it says status check. Um, the Bluetooth module that's actually there is uh, that it, when you look for it, I've got an Android device. And so what they tell you to do on the Android device is you go into your phone and go into setup and then go into Bluetooth. And then there should be um, a something that you can pair with. And that DDMB86B, if you can see that, that's the unit that it does it. Uh, so the status check is there. The next thing is off. This is for um, this is for how I want to leave my Bluetooth uh, setup only, meaning Bluetooth is only going to be on during setup or always on. And I'm just going to leave it always on. I don't really see any sense in uh, not having it. I would assume that. When the motorcycle turns off that the Bluetooth and gauges will turn off. So I'm going to hold the function switch again. It says hold the set. And then once it's set, then it tells me to release. So now I've got that uh, back. And I'm actually able to uh, go into my phone and if you can see that it's doing a, a connecting right now and now it's connected so uh, my phone app now is connected to the Bluetooth so let's get out of this um, go back hold it down the function switch and hold the set and release it and now I'm into the point where I can start picking things and to be honest with you I have not really any idea of uh, what I'm gonna pick so um, it does give you a, 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 a listing here uh, of how the you know how the gauges are going to look, and so the first one that they actually ask you about is diagnostics. There, if you can see that, um, I don't see any reason to do diagnostics right now. Uh, we can play with that later. So the next one we're going to go to in, go into is lighting, and the lighting color uh, allows you to set what the gauges look like. And to be honest, for for me right now, it looks it looks fine. Although I don't know what you know what other colors are there, um, but I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> now I do want to set up my uh, odometer reading to be the same as what the uh, ECM has. Um, so uh, in order to do that, uh, I guess we go to the uh, odometer preset which is what is part of speed and if we hold the function button down and release it we're going to go into speed it tells me that I can adjust the speed however I did take it out for a test run and there was no issue between the miles per hour 
that I was getting on the radio and with that function. Uh, go down to unit here. Unit's going to select miles per hour or uh, kilometers per hour. And it's showing miles per hour. So we're good there. And now we go back. And we'll continue. We're not going to do a service reset, but we're going to do a preset odometer. Um, so we're going to press and hold that. And that should bring up my ECM reading. At least that's what I'm hoping. Yes, and it does. I know that uh, 302015 was my odometer reading. So to save that, um, it says hold the switch for each flashing number. So we're going to set it. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to do each number to hold and set it to. As it flashes, apparently I could change my odometer reading, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to save it, and right now it says no, so I'm going to click to yes, and then hold it, and hopefully you can see this stuff, and release, and now we're going to go back. Okay, the next thing we come to is tack. And it's going to give us, that function is to give you a high warning. I'm not really sure if we really need to set something like that up. We'll go into it and look. And the high warning is there. I believe it's going to now set us up with a, an RPM. Right now it's set at 550. I don't know. I'm not really sure what the uh, red line is on the tack. So, but I'm going to bring it up a little higher than that because uh, I don't know if we really need a warning. So I'm going to set it at 6,500. And that's set, so we'll go back. The next thing we have is temperature, so let's go into temperature. And the first thing we have is unit, so I'm going to go into unit. It should be Fahrenheit. All right, and the F is have, does has an asterisk on it, so I know that's good. So let's go back. And the next thing, I'm, next, uh, thing we come up to is on, and <clears throat> having the temperature sensor on is what I want to do, so let's make sure it's on. All right, now by turning it on, we do get a high warning and a test option. So let's go into high warning. And actually, I'm not really sure what temperature to set the... Uh, Temperature 2, right now it's selected at 300, so I guess I'm just going to leave that preset. Uh, and I'm not really sure uh, what, what it is, but I'm just going to leave it at 300. So we'll hold that, set that. And then the last thing we do is test. And the test function, I uh, believe that test, it's a resistance test. And it says that the uh, it'll give me a value in ohms um, so I'm assuming uh, that that is the uh, sensor but I'm not really positive what that is so let's do test and let's just see what we get and right now it says 43 that's jumping around but approximately 43 30 4,330 ohms. So I'll probably write that number down as that'll be a baseline for uh, testing in the future. So we'll save that when we get out of that. And now we'll go back. Next thing we come up to is fuel. Now, fuel might be kind of cool. Um, it's asking for what the sender is. So I'm assuming that's a uh, part of the motorcycle. 
uh, the fuel sender sensor that's sending the uh, information back telling you how much you have gas you have and it's selected right now to an HD 2011 so I'm just going to leave it as that as I'm assuming that's probably set for the Harley bikes next thing is the range to empty which I kind of like that function so I'm going to leave that as on I have to be able to turn that on or off but I'm going to leave it as on let me go back All right, and the next thing is test, which I'm really don't think I really need to do right now. Um, what the test does is it actually is for displaying the sender resistance for troubleshooting. So I'm assuming if you're testing the uh, fuel system that you could test and see what it is. So let's just go ahead and press test and get a baseline of what our uh, front reading is. Right now it says it's at 85 ohms, so I'm hoping that's good, but I don't know. Click on it back. We'll go back now. All right, now we'll go down to volt. And we've got a low warning uh, selection that we can pick here. So let's pick low warning. And right now, the low warning is set to 11 volts. Well, I'm assuming that that's probably been tested in that but it looks like we can go more so we can go from 11.0 to twelve point one so I'll leave it at eleven all right let's go back Okay, now we're going to do displays. And displays here has a bunch of different options for uh, setting the gauges, the left and right gauges, and what other displays that uh, can be shown by pressing the function switch. So let's go into displays. And the first thing we're going to get is the park light, which that for us tri-glide odors is to see if we have the parking brake on. <clears throat> And right now it says show on a 2019, back show on a 2014 to 2016, uh, or I'm sorry, 18, show 24. So we have, I have a 20, 2016 bike, so I'm going to select that one. All right, now that should give me the uh, display when I turn, when I have my parking brake on. Okay, the next four settings, speed top, speed bottom, uh, tack top, and tack bottom, those are actually for the performance um, indicators. And the performance readings uh, are highest, are, uh, um, <clears throat> start over. The next two, uh, start over. The next four settings are for the performance readings. And where they put the performance readings would be either on the top display or the bottom display. So the performance readings are highest uh, MPG, which is the highest speed recall, uh, a zero to 60 time, um, quarter mile speed and time, and high RPM. So I'm not really, I don't really care if I see those. Um, and on the speed top or the speed bottom or the tack top or the tack bottom. So let's go into speed top 
and I want to make sure that my performance settings is turned off. And right now, the asterisk is on the performance hide, so that's what I want it to be. So we'll go back now and go to the bottom one. All right, speed bottom, we'll go into speed bottom. And right now, the asterisk is on performance hide, so it's not going to show on either of those two displays. And we'll go back. And now the tack top, which means it's going to put it on the right-hand side gauge over here. So we go into that, and we'll see it right now is set for performance hide, so it won't show those settings. And I think as I was doing this, I think I will put it on the tack bottom. So that means the display will be on the lower part down here on the tack. And as I toggle through with the function switch, I would be able to see those if I ever wanted to have them. But you can turn them off. So right now I do have it on performance hide. So I'm going to select performance show. Now gauge one, I definitely want to do gauge one. Gauge one right now has my oil sensor temperature, which is good. So we'll go into gauge one, and I'm guessing that's what's going to be set, and it is. So we'll find what, what, else, what other ones I can display is I can display my oil pressure, my fuel, my air temperature, and my head temperature. And that's it, it looks like. So I'm going to leave my oil uh, temperature there, and then we're going to go down to number gauge number one dual which this is going to make this gauge a dual functioning one. And what right now it has none, that's why we only have one display. And I really want to see my air temperature. So I can look at my air and my oil pressure temperature. So there's my air temperature, so I'm going to press and hold that. And now it just put my air temperature there on the top part of the gauge. So I'm happy with that. Gauge 2. Right now I have volts, um, and I like volts. And since the, since the, since I know it's going to put you know another display down there now, let's go down to gauge two dual. And I think on that one right now it says none, which you can only see one display. But I think what I want to do on that one is I'd like to make that one my fuel. I don't know why I just. Thought I'd try that. I don't really need oil PSI, uh, and I already have air temperature, so I'm going to select fuel, and that'll give me a visual reading of what my gas tank is at. So right now it looks like I'm at 78%. Let's see, the next one is this MBMS. I'm not sure what that is, so let's go into that and see. And I got an option of none, back, None and back. Hmm. Okay. So let's just go back since I'm not really sure what to set that one for. Um, my next choice is an alternate speed, which I'm not sure what that is. So let's go into that and see what that is. Oh, okay. I know what I'm doing. Okay. So the alternate speed, it would show me if I wanted kilometers per mile. Uh, also, and I'm going to hide that because I really don't. So let's go back. All right, and then we'll select back. All right, gear. So let's go into gear. And this one is a preset or a trike or learn. Well, we want to do the trike because we're a trike. So, uh, We'll go ahead and select trike. And that's it. It says we're done. So I guess if we turn her off and turn it on. And so that's it. So now if you can see the carrot here, or the little arrow that they call it right there, let me trigger the function switch. So there's our B trip, our trip time, oil pressure, 
uh, distance to empty, uh, the, he the head temperature, and back to uh, gear and uh, time. Now, if you hold the button down, it says move line, and then release to move. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing, I'm setting the clock actually right now, which the clock is set correctly. So this one just sets just like the um, odometer did. We just hold it down. And the eight. Okay, so we're good there. All right, there we go. So we hold the button down and then release it. Now we're on the bottom, we've got miles, um, the odometer. I actually want that there, so I'm just gonna leave that. And let's see if we can move over to the other side. Yep, and there we go. So we moved over to the other side. Now right now it says my high RPM. I thought, I'd, I, thought I got rid of that. And I don't really want that. So I'll put distance to empty on that one. I kind of like that one. And then for the bottom one, I don't know, I don't usually keep my trip time in that. Okay, I'll put my head temperature down there for the heck of it. So that's how to set it up. And uh, it's not too bad. You can play around with whatever settings you want to keep. And um, it should be... Uh, I don't know, how, however you want to make it for your own personal display. So I turn that on, I release it. And now on my app, I click on that DDM Baker 86 Baker, and it's going to connect to it. And I am in setup mode right now. So if we go up to the top and hit setup, then this is where we just have all those functions that we just had. Speed and tack. So it'll tell me the service warning. All right, there's, oh, well, here's a service warning so it can tell me. I don't want that service warning. I know what that is. Miles per hour is there. High tech warning is at 5,500. Um, I'd say that's a little bit low. I'm not sure what this thing red line's at. I'll move it up to 6,000. So that changes that. Um, our gauges, uh, we have, there's our low voltage warning right there um, at 11 volts. Uh, the oil temperature is on, high warning at 300 units Fahrenheit. Fuel setup, um, fuel input. Okay, we are doing the HD one. Tank size, I don't have a choice on that. So uh, range to empty is turned on. Going back to, let's see, lighting. Uh, this is where I guess I can change the lighting. Let's do normal. Don't see. Now, oh, that's for sunlight. Sunlight to invert. Auto dimming's on auto. Um, I might just want to turn that off so it can be nice and bright. I don't know if that would hurt anything or not. Well, dimming for the nighttime. So I guess if I go back to auto, that would be good. The theme, these are my current themes I guess I can select. There's quite a few themes that are there. Um, let's, let's change it to white hot. Okay, so that changed all the numbers to red. Let's change it to messages. Okay, I don't like that. That's too dark. I think I'm just going to go with the factory right away and try that. So... We'll go back. We're not going to save it because we didn't really change anything. So go back. So you can go through, uh, you know, most of your um, setups here uh, with the app. So hope this has helped. All right, let's talk about the gauges here now. Uh, that's obviously our oil light neutral. Uh, brights on. There are the miles per hour and the RPMs. 
Of course, my 63 air temperature, 62 oil temperature, 78% of fuel, 12.4 volts. But in here are the small, as they call them in cars, idiot lights. Uh, you'll see cruise control turn on, and it goes green once you select it. Um, if I put on my parking brake, you see the little P pop up there. Um, there is uh, traction control uh, availability. Uh, the reverse light uh, would come over on this side right here. The motor's not running, so I can't put it into reverse. Um, if we had ABS, there is an ABS indicator right there. Uh, high temperature is going to come right here. The left and the right turn signals. All right, as I go into turning the bike on, you now see the security key and as well as the check engine light that was just there. Um, these are our two areas here. This is our top and bottom uh, for settings that can be through the, uh, through the setup. Uh, same over here, top and bottom for the tack. <clears throat> and then you can cycle through as you need to, um, you know, on either one of them. To move the line, you hold the button down, and then when it starts to come back, you release it, and then it moves the arrow over here. So those are the main functions and lights that you're going to see uh, when you turn this thing on. All right, so I took it out for a test run and tried to get the gauges the way I like them or set up to what I want to see. Um, the speedometer was pretty much on uh, with the one that's on the radio, so I'll have to choose a different selection for something on the radio. Now the radio just on with the time. And you can see on the right gauge there, the large right gauge, I've got 240 there. So I've got it set up the way I really want it here. I've got, this is the air temperature right here. Below it's the oil uh, temperature. Of course, my miles per hour. Uh, this is the gas gauge. I did fill it up with gas. Going over, I've got obviously miles per hour and then my odometer reading. And then I've got my distance to end, which tells me about the fuel. Um, then over here we've got our RPM, so we got the tack going. Here, was the, here will be my gear numbers when I'm shifting, uh, the time, and right now I've just got oil pressure there. I'm not really sure what I want to put there. Um, maybe a trip one, I'm not sure. Over on this side then I've got the fuel uh, percentage, which right now is at 99% because I just filled it up, and the current voltage rate. When that is running it was about 14 something volts. But anyway, uh, actually I could see them. I do. I am far nearsighted, so I can't see far. Never made any sense to me. Um, but the gauges are large enough that I can see every one of them. I can see my miles per hour and uh, my tack setting, everything else. So that's kind of a nice thing. When I was in a dark environment, um, these things changed. So this black background went to white and the numbers went to black. Um, so I'll have to try a test drive at night. Um, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with this, and uh, uh, it looks like a nice upgrade. This is a little behind the scenes of how we filmed the gauges being done. I had to rig up my GoPro to hook up uh, so we could see the gauges, and you can see the GoPro sitting there, and clamp that down to a my pointing stick as I call it so that I could see the gauges because I saw no way that I could film this thing with my uh, 35 millimeter camera and then off or off on the side over here then I actually had my iPad going with the video coming out of the uh, GoPro so I could actually see that and that's also where I had my uh, phone for the app so a little behind the scenes it was just kind of a challenge on how to try and film those gauges and I'm hoping that uh, uh, hoping and you know that those that it did show really well uh, so we'll go from there